The sun is finally out after weeks of miserable wet weather. And just before I started vlogging, in this field behind me, I saw some roe deer. Now I managed to get a very quick clip of them jumping over a ditch and disappearing into the woodland. But to do that, I was using my Canon 7D Mark II Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, and it's all resting on my K and F tripod. This is the setup I'm gonna be using today to get some awesome wildlife photos. When I say we've been having bad weather, I think this tree just about sums it up. Yep, this is the path that I'm meant to be taking. And the tree has kind of put a stop to that. Clearly the wind and all the wet weather has caused this large tree to fall down. So I'm gonna have to go back the way we came and we're not going to be going down that path today. Behind me here you can see a tree which is swamped in ivy and this is a habitat where you can find a very typical winter bird. You get thrushes, red wings, missile thrushes, you get all these kind of thrush type birds, even blackbirds, which go on these trees and eat the ivy berries. It's a magnet for them during the winter and so I've set up my camera pointing at the tree and we have got some photos of a red wing so far. I'm just hanging around seeing if anything else will come. Now when it comes to positioning, how I've done it is I am on the same side as the sun. You see the sun is behind me and that means that the sun is hitting the tree and that's kind of acting as my key light. It is at a slight angle because that gives me a bit of contrast because I'll have a slight shadow on the other side of the bird but I will still get a nicely lit bird so it's not a silhouette. Now when you've got time to think about your positioning it's very important you do that because it does mean you'll get better wildlife photos. They'll look planned, they'll look better, you'll get better lighting, you use a lower shutter speed, lower ISO so the images themselves will come out better. It's definitely worth thinking about the composition almost as if you're in a studio. Why do I feel like I just saw a kingfisher over there? Okay, quick change of subject. No, it's not a kingfisher. Now the reason I'm jumpy about kingfishers is because last time I was out here, boy we saw a lot of kingfishers. And there's a red kite above me as well. Everything's going off now, and I want to be watching the ivy tree. and we just found a great tit. It was flying around in the trees, but we came across a problem that many wildlife, in fact, every wildlife photographer will come across when photographing birds. When the bird is high up in the tree, sometimes it'll be against a clear sky. And if the background is a clear sky, then the camera is automatically going to underexpose the image. This is because the camera automatically exposes for the background, thinking it's a brighter composition than it is. Now to combat this, I had to manually raise the ISO, but I didn't want to go too high so that the background was totally white, because if the background's totally white, you can't really redeem it in post-processing. Ultimately, here are the images I got after brightening up the bird. I hope they look okay. If not, then it was just a good experience to take the photos and see the great tip. As you can see, the water on the canal is relatively calm today, meaning we got some cool photos of some swans. As they were swimming towards me, I not only took some video, I also took some reflection shots, and I did this by getting low to the ground. The only problem is, as you may have noticed, the ground is very wet, and so I didn't want to lie down on the ground, but with the Canon 7D Mark II's flat LCD screen, I couldn't really get a good angle to see what I was taking, meaning I couldn't get down as low as I would have liked. Whereas if I had my Canon 250D, I would have just rotated the screen so I could see it and I could have held it just above the water.
don't know if you can see this right here and this. It's a load of cow prints. So clearly some cows have been walking down this path, which is very interesting. I didn't think they'd ship cows down a little footpath like this. Either way, in the sky just a second ago, we saw a buzzard. It was circling. It just popped out from behind the trees as I was trying to photograph a moorhen. And then, oh, it's really muddy. And then once it came out from the trees, we got some beautiful photos. Now, once again, I was positioned facing this way. The sun was behind me, illuminating the bottom of the bird, meaning that the bottom of the bird was beautifully lit up. So we have lots of awesome details and it's not just a silhouette of the bird very happy with these photos some of the times when it kind of arced its body round its legs were just like dangling which i haven't actually seen before and so they were some cool photos to get it just gives a different perspective on the buzzard The craziest thing just happened. A red kite was flying up the canal below tree level, so really low, and it was being chased by a jackdaw. Now the red kite had something in its claws. I'm not sure what it was, but I took some photos. I believe it was just a bit of meat, probably something it has scavenged. Now, I wasn't quite ready, so it was a bit of a manic rush getting the camera up, and I did use a slower shutter speed than I would have liked if I could have chose. And this means that some of the photos are blurry, but some of them are in focus, and the ones which are normally have blurry wings because the red kite was flapping. It can't soar when it's this low to the ground. The red kite then went a bit higher. I up to the shutter speed, we got some more awesome photos before it dropped whatever it was scavenging into the canal. Now it was just doing kind of somersaults in the sky and dropped what it was holding, plopped into the water. And I, I don't know why it did that, whether it intended to or not. Either way, we got some awesome photos and here they are. say it but I've come across a problem and the problem is that I'm not sure how well you can see but that is the longest puddle in the existence of puddles and it spans the entire path for at least 10 meters it would be okay if I was wearing boots but I'm wearing trainers today and I am never gonna get through there without swamping myself. So we're gonna have to turn around. I don't believe how long that puddle is, it's insane. And that is the problem with all this water. Not only does it mean we can't go out because of our equipment getting wet, we also can't go out because these paths, which aren't very well kept, get extremely muddy and quite frankly, just dangerous to walk along because they're wet or they're slippery. The whole thing is not ideal. And after that incredibly long walk we're done, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.